the Pythagorean harp is a design of mine that's based on a very ancient instrument that has been commonly called the monochord, which has appeared sometimes in forms of many chords being the same thickness or the same note. So basically, my concept, I have three different harps I've designed, and I've been playing them over the years in my own way, finding, exploring from what I have read from different texts and different stories of history of the numerology and the secrets of the magic of the sounds of music, how it affects us, and in what way we can find the correct overtones and tune them in a way that's intuitive and creative. And uh, I also have students with the harp, and I show them in the way that they can find their own song inside of them. And I believe we all have many songs inside of us, and with the natural proportions of the Pythagorean intervals, we can find uh, how to create our own music spontaneously, and it can be change our song every day, because every day is a new day and there's a new song in it. So that's basically what my idea, uh, the, the mysticism of Pythagoras is also very intriguing to me. I've been studying things and I think I've discovered certain things, intuitive things, of how to actually apply or how to play the Pythagorean harp that uh, I haven't really discovered from other sources in these last 2,500 years since Pythagoras was with us. And uh, the philosophy of Pythagoras is very interesting and there's been a lot of cover-up with the media and the history uh, that's very interesting and that kind of aspect of the Pythagorean philosophy and how it relates to music is the, the, what, re, what is important with the Pythagorean harp and how we can apply it uh, in an intuitive, simple way, use it in a curative way, to relax, to, in a meditative way. And uh, this small version, which is the beginner's version, the way I learned to play the harp, I found a, a very similar instrument in my college when, I, when we were studying a, in a seminar about the music of the spheres. And uh, you never really played the harp. They had a different way of measuring notes and they used it for very historic purposes. But I just started playing it and, and uh, playing around with the Pythagorean intervals and come up with many different ways of tuning it and playing it. I'm a drummer by nature. And uh, basically, I play jazz, uh, I've played in symphonic music, and I have a history. That's basically what I've done is studied world music. I play tablas from India, and uh, the dumbek from the mi Middle Orient. And so I would like to uh, just demonstrate a little bit, very simply, how these tunings work on the small harp. We have a, we have a harmonic point here that is actually the same note because I divide it into three parts. This one vibrates twice as slow as this one and it creates the phenomena of the same note but an octave difference. Here we have a, another phenomena, Pythagorean phenomena, that is three and then when, and two. The relationship of three to two creates the interval of what we call uh, do to sol or C to G. In this case it's D to A and I'm not sure how I tuned it but basically the interval of a fifth is what I've got here. And here let's explore. This is another octave but it's another octave higher. It's actually four to one. And the basic principles, this is basically the whole trick to Pythagorean music is those three numbers, one, two, and three and uh, how you get all the other tunings come from a basic concept of playing a small harp like this. I have also have a harp of seven strings, which I'll show you in a minute, and a 13-string model, which I'll perform for you. Here's a little example.
So the idea, once you tune the harp, whether it's the, the four-string model, seven-string model, or 13-string model, is that you can play any note that you want or any pattern that you want, and it should come out musical because the nature of the proportions of these harmonics are so natural, they can be set in almost any different combination. And so it's like throwing the dice. It's really a certain mathematical way that we can unlock the intuitive part of each of us and learn music that way. You know, and that's the idea, to give a different approach that's uh, quite a bit more subjective than objective, and that each person can explore their own music through these natural laws of music. The natural laws of music were called canons. And it's interesting because the Pythagoreans, with this instrument, they called it the canon, which are also the laws of nature. And according to what I've discovered, the little I've been able to discover in the history of Pythagoras, that the laws of music are the basis of the laws of mathematics and the laws of physical science, the laws of uh, all the arts, which is dancing, painting, uh, the biology of healing, they're all basic, based on the musical concepts of creating harmony. And this is the part of Pythagoras they don't really teach in the schools, but it's an actual fact that has been reported by the historians, but they're very ashamed of the fact that Pythagoras never wrote anything about his treatises of music. So basically I'm on the path of rediscovering these uh, ideas based on very simple musical ratios that are considered to be Pythagorean. So basically, that's, that's uh, the presentation of my four string instrument and a little bit about the philosophy of Pythagorean music. Thanks.